Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 4th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier came across a pretty interesting visual basic macro that actually turned out to be part of a document that was either distributed as part of a red team exercise or a targeted attack where Xavier believes it's probably the former because of the very specific version of the .NET framework that was required for this particular macro to run. This technique is often used in order to avoid collateral damage. In this case, the attacker has set actually up a website distributing a diversity and inclusion survey that then loaded the malicious macro. What's also sort of interesting is that the bot actually is able to communicate via a couple of different command and control channels. Looks like, well, HTTP, of course, but also Slack and then also a DNS. And well, we do have updates for the boot hole vulnerability. That was the vulnerability in CRUB2. And I told you that uh, this is a little bit of tricky update to release and apply. Well, Red Hat now, as well as Debian and Ubuntu have come up with packages that should make installation easy but looks like they didn't get it quite right initially, in particular for Red Hat and with that also for CentOS, there are reports of systems that fail to boot after the update was applied and it's actually a little bit tricky uh, to get them to work again. Similar issues also with some Debian and Ubuntu installs doesn't appear to be as common with those systems compared to Red Hat at SendOS and seems to be more limited to dual boot systems that boot via uh, Linux or Windows. I'll link in the show notes to respective uh, troubleshoot notices that Ubuntu and uh, Red Hat published. So hopefully that'll help you if you got affected by this bad update. If you only applied the update and you didn't reboot yet, uh, well, uh, have uh, those articles handy. And security researcher Matt Shockley found an amazingly simple way actually to bypass transparency, consent and control, TCC in macOS. This framework regulates what software can access restricted locations, like for example, your downloads folder or your documents folder. So if you run some software, like for example, terminal, it has to ask for permission before it accesses those location even though you as a user have a read access to those files. Now the vulnerability is based on a SQLite database that tracks these permissions. In order to change the SQLite database you again need a piece of software that has the entitlements to actually manipulate those permissions. Obviously, the daemon that manages all these permissions has uh, the access to that database. It needs to have access to the database and it does read as part of the location where to find the database, the home variable that the user can control. So just by changing that home variable to a different directory in the proof of concept here to slash temp, it's trivial to then change the location of the database to a location that's not restricted that the user can control and where the user can add additional entries to the database. So in the end, a real simple exploit actually for a fairly complex feature. This feature has had issues in the past. It is a fairly complex feature to implement and well, uh, I guess even easy mistakes are easily made. And CISA, the Cybersecurity and Information Security Agency, has released details regarding a malware campaign that is attributed to the Chinese government. So as part of this, we will find hashes and other details that you definitely uh, should sort of add to things to look for in your environment. Now, this has been used more in targeted attacks, so 
you're not very likely to find it. Uh, what I always recommend uh, when you're reading reports like this, uh, don't focus too much on the hashes and IP addresses. Focus more on the methods, sort of the command control channels being used and uh, see if you can find any of those details in your environment. One interesting feature that uh, I saw skipping uh, through uh, this report was that uh, the command control server uses port 443, but uh, does actually use at least uh, some partially unencrypted uh, HTTP command. So you will see, for example, the string 200 OK in the clear. And well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.